Lethal Company, a 3D roguelite where you hope your friends don't do something stupid and then pray to the gods of RNG that you survive. D&D, a tabletop role-playing game where you hope your friends don't do something stupid and then pray to the gods of RNG that you survive. Both games that you can arguably play alone but are definitely more fun with friends. So I thought it might be fun to put them in a blender, mix them up, and see what fun amalgamations come out of it. So today, let's figure out Lethal Company in D&D. We're gonna go through the list of monsters in Lethal Company and figure out what some of them would look like in D&D. I say some because, well, there's a lot of them. And how much you're gonna get is based on how much effort I want to put into this video. So without further ado, let's begin. To begin with, the eyeless dogs. Now, what do we know about them? They're big, they're blind, and very, very dog-like. Luckily, D&D already has its own version of the giant dog in the form of a dire wolf. Just put on the blinded condition and you've got your own very vicious eyeless dog at the ready. Though, the rules for blinded in D&D would make them a lot less of a threat. So my thoughts are, once they detect your players, then well, just let them attack normally and watch as the chaos and carnage unfolds. Earth Leviathan, giant worm that pops out of the ground and swallows you whole without mercy. The first thought that came to mind was of course, the purple worm. Also a giant worm that pops out of the ground and swallows you whole without mercy. Coilheads. There's no mannequin monster in D&D, which is a shame, but I thought the animated armor would make a good substitute. Just have them stop moving when the players look at them and give them unlimited health because for all intents and purposes, the coilheads are immortal. Snarefly. This one was a bit tricky because suffocating an enemy to death isn't really explored in D&D as much as it should be. So the closest thing I found was this rug of smothering. Just change their sprite to be a little bit more insect-like, remove the immunities and you've got yourself a snare flea. Thumper. Now hear me out, orc. Before you clock out, let me explain why. The thumper is known for having good eyesight, going fast in a straight line and being deaf. Orcs have this trait called aggressive, allowing them to quickly move towards a creature in their line of sight. Just add the deafened condition to them and you've got yourself a thumper. Now, if a normal orc isn't impressive enough, then consider using an orc claw or an orc blade or many of the other devastating orc variants. Hygrodare. Yeah, I didn't know that's what these were called either, but they're essentially the giant blue slimes you encounter in Lethal Company. Luckily, D&D has the gelatinous cube which is essentially the same thing. The Forest Keeper. Well, it's a giant tree that wants to crush you, and D&D just so happens to have its own giant tree monster that wants to crush you. The Trent. Circuit Bees. This little electric swarm has always been one of my favorites, and luckily, D&D has its own swarm of insects ready to use. Just replace their piercing bite attack with lightning and you're good to go. The Hoarding Bug. Everyone's favorite little insect nuisances. Now, the obvious choice would be D&D's favorite looter, the goblins. However, it might be more fun to put in the giant insect monster known as the Ankheg. A little more dangerous than a goblin, but might convince your players to be a little more careful with their hard pilfered goods. Baboon Hawks. Not sure how they are baboons or monkeys, but apparently they are. D&D just so happens to have a stat for monkeys, so you're good to go. Fun fact. I once traumatized my players with a pack of monkeys. It was great. The Nutcracker. They are essentially humanoids with a shotgun. Luckily, D&D has a shotgun we can use. So just take a guard, give them a shotgun, and you're good to go. Though, if a guard isn't threatening enough, then maybe instead give it to one of the stronger humanoid enemies, like an assassin. Can you imagine that? An assassin with a shotgun. Ghost Girl. This terrifying apparition that haunts you in your sleep is known to haunt only one player at a time, seen and heard by them, and them alone. It can be replicated in D&D by a classic ghost. Just roll a d4 to see which unfortunate player it haunts. Or if you're feeling spiteful, you can choose who to torment yourself. Bunker Spider. Giant spiders that are the bane of arachnophobes everywhere, and unfortunately for them, D&D has its own giant spider ready to use. Spore Lizard. Apparently these things aren't as dangerous as I thought they were. Despite their big mouth, they don't bite and just spread some spores when threatened. So 
the perfect way to imitate it would be to take a giant lizard and replace its normal attack with Acid Splash. But if you're feeling malicious, then just give it Acid Splash and let it keep its normal attack. Roaming Locusts. Technically a monster in little company, but a harmless one. But that doesn't mean we can't just use a swarm of insects and turn them less than harmless. Sure, you can just remove its bite attack and make it harmless, but what's the fun in that? Speaking of harmless mobs turned dangerous, Manticoil. The flying birds that you see off in the distance. Sure, harmless, but you know, maybe the CR11 rock would be perfect for it. The ever looming threat hovering above you just might ensure your players don't wander too long outside the factory. The Bracken. This one was a little tricky, but the essence of the Bracken is that it likes to hide in shadows, stalk its prey, and does a ton of damage when it eventually strikes. So, after some searching, I decided the best choice was the Star Spawn Mangler, an obscure but terrifying D&D creature from Mordecai's Tome of Foes. Mordecai's Tome of Foes. The Jester. This one I definitely struggled with. The Jester is a terrifying monster that you pretty much just have to escape from or die. I couldn't decide if I wanted a strong monster, a fast monster, or a monster with insta-kill, or you know, something along those lines. My top choices were Lich, a Bodak, or a Solar, for different reasons. Then I found this, the Grim Jester from Tome of Beasts, and decided to just go with it for the thematics. There's probably a better option, but I couldn't find it. So let me know, what do you think the Jester should be in D&D? The Masks. Besides the mask and the blood spewing, they're pretty much just normal humanoid enemies. So if a player is turned to a mask, then give them the player's stat block. And if they spawn naturally, then give them the stat block of a normal guard. Only difference is, whatever attack they had before, replace it with the acid breath of an adult black dragon, and then convert whatever player that dies to a mask enemy. Since the mask can be seen to grab players before turning them, maybe make them have to grapple the player before attacking. Finally, the shopkeeper. While not technically an enemy, I'm sure we've all seen what happens when you ring the bell a few too many times. Not saying your players will want to attack them, but you know. It's D&D. They'll probably want to attack them. So, for our humble shopkeep, why not use an abolet? They're intelligent, ancient, powerful, tentacly. Not sure why an abolet would want to buy scrap, but I'm sure a creative DM could come up with some fascinating plot. Maybe they want to use the scrap, melt it down, and forge a weapon of unparalleled power. Or something along those lines. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Does it seem a little unfair and unbalanced? Maybe, but that's half the fun of it. Maybe I'll make another video later, but for now, if you like this one, leave a like and subscribe, and then uh, I'll see you later.